Hey everybody, welcome back to another full self-driving beta video. My name is John and I document full self-driving beta in the Chicago area. I have been testing beta since October 24th, 2021, which is about 19, 20 months now. And I'm super excited to have the latest version of beta to test out here in downtown Chicago. I'm gonna take it through a series of destinations, but first of all, you may be wondering, how did I get the latest version of beta? I was let into the OG group. I'm very thankful for that and I'm thoroughly, con I'm. I'm very thankful for that, and I'm thoroughly convinced that Elon Musk himself added me into the group. He has replied to three of my tweets. I garnered quite a bit of attention through testing the safety around children. I had some dummies in the road, and I did a number of different tests. That video went semi-viral. I was interviewed by CNN, so I like to put it through these very difficult tests, and I'm gonna tell you the good and the bad. In fact, a lot of people don't like me because I expose some of the bad things, but. I'm, I'm a very factual guy, I'm an engineer. I document things and I, I gravitate toward the things that it does wrong. I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to just filter everything and post only the good. So I post both the good and the bad. So let's take a look at where we are. I am taking it, first of all, to the Trump International Hotel, and then I'm gonna take it over to the Chicago Theater, and then uh, I'm gonna take it over to Millennium Park on the Magnificent Mile, which is Michigan Avenue, and then over to the Willis Tower, which was formerly known as the Sears Tower. And then last but not least, we're gonna be swinging by the Chicago Union Station. So these are some iconic locations in downtown Chicago. This is a very dynamic environment. So let's go ahead and get started. Double tap down, and it says limiting speed, max speed for road type. Here we go, we are off. There is a dog. I did not see the dog show up there. It's hit or miss on dogs. They used to show up pretty consistently. Okay, coming out here, I'm looking left and right. It is clear to go. Good, it needs to get out of this turn lane. Actually, we are turning left here, so this is the correct lane to be in. Every so often, I'm going to be jumping in here while I'm editing just to comment. I think it's hilarious that the car is smarter than me and knows which lane to get in going forward really nicely there nice and smooth beautiful it kept the inner lane there I liked that a lot coming through here an unnamed road so it looks like it's going to actually take the highway to get here which is not really what I would do actually it's gonna get off at Lake Street very interesting it's kind of almost like going onto the highway but then it's gonna have to get all the way over, I think. Let's see here. I don't drive down here that often. So Lake Street, okay, here we go. Up here, we're gonna be turning right. So take a look at this. I don't drive down here all that often myself, so it's awfully confusing, this area, but it's going 25 miles an hour. I'm letting it go slow, nobody behind us. It's saying that we have to get off at Lake Street, so I'm looking for the exit myself, trying to figure out where it needs to go. It needs to go right over there to the right, and it's missing it right there. Unfortunately, it totally missed it, so it does have to reroute at this point. Ooh, now it's not gonna be able to merge. Let's see what happens here. It's gonna have to do a pretty big detour so it's trying to go to the right, and it's asking me now to take over. So I had to step on the accelerator because it didn't know what to do there. So I'm going to take over and turn it back on. It missed that exit, unfortunately. We are off to a bad start, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's going to get off here, though, and then correct itself, and we'll be back on the city roads. I was a little bit surprised that it went out on the highway. I've dialed in these destinations before, and it's never taken this route before, so I'm not sure what changed or why it decided to do what it did but once we get off here we should be back on track hopefully it'll still go on wacker drive oh it looks like it's coming up north now so no more wacker drive and we could try to probably force it back on wacker drive but let's let it do this current this reroute and see where it goes okay getting way over there's no lanes here and kind of all over the place, it, it can't see the lines on the road. And there we go, it corrected itself. In that situation, I think it did a fairly decent job. Even as a human driver, I couldn't really see the lines that well. The cool part is that once it recognized where the lines were, it didn't swerve abruptly into the correct lane. It just kind of coolly and calmly moved over. And as a viewer of my content, I really value your time. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'm going to fast forward past all the parts that don't deserve any special extra attention. Okay, so coming up, we're going to be turning right onto North Clark Street. 
We don't have too many people out and about yet. Still a little bit early on Saturday here. Traffic is pretty decent. We've got quite a few vehicles on the road here. We've got one more street here and we're going to be turning right. It needs to get all the way over here. Nobody behind us at the moment, so it puts me at ease. And we're going to be facing this red light here and people crossing the road. Now, technically, we can turn right on red. There is no sign here that says we cannot. We do have another pedestrian coming. Thankfully, it spotted them before it went for it. Okay, now that she has passed over, we are good to go. Let's see, we've got a bicyclist coming on the left. And the car is waiting for the bicyclist. Smart. We've got another cyclist coming up pretty quick on the left. And the car almost went right into him. <laughs> so he, he looked at me and was a little bit worried that I was going to go. But thankfully, Beta saw him at the last second and slowed down. I have to correct myself here. Beta did not see him at the last second. It saw him the entire time. You can see him coming in from the left here. I'm going to zoom in and slow this down even more so we can really examine this. Here he is gray. My car starts to move. I'm going to provide this feedback to the Beta team. It should not have done that, but it did take caution and it did hesitate. It did not run into this bicyclist. Changing lanes to follow route. Great. So now we are going to be ending up here on Wacker Drive. All right, proceeding forward here. Okay, and Illinois Street is not the street that we're turning on. We've got one more, I believe. Actually, a couple more. Let's, let's pull this over. Yeah, we've got a couple more. We're going to be going over the river. Okay, getting in the left lane, this is not the right move. As you can see, there's some vehicles blocking us and it made the correction pretty quickly. Someone coming up behind us, thankfully didn't interrupt them too much there. And that car there pulling over and here comes the river. Go right over the river. Okay, green light. Going through here and stopping for traffic light. Left turn signal is on. This is where we are going to be turning. And we've got a lady up there with her dog. And here's another gentleman with his dog. And there's the dog. It showed up there briefly. Good, good. Scooter. <laughs> it just shows some guy like floating across without any bike or anything. That was pretty funny. All right, I had to do a replay of this. Woo! <laughs> I thought that was pretty There's another dog. Look at that. Does not see the small little tiny dogs. Okay. Forward here. Very nice. All right. This is a beautiful part of downtown Chicago. Okay. It's green going through here. Sunlight's coming in at a little bit of a strange angle. Sometimes I lose connectivity down in the city because of all the tall buildings. The GPS with the satellites, it has a hard time uh, making connection because it will bounce and reflect off of the buildings. Okay, this part gets me really excited, so I have to draw special attention to this. Take a look. We're getting in the left turn lane. It gets away from this bus just ever so slightly. It's subtle. It's hard to notice in the video, but look, it stops at this white line here for the red light and then proceeds forward as soon as it's green. It's yielding to the bus. I love the visualizations here with everything here in the intersection. It made me a little bit nervous with that bus. I wasn't sure if it was going to go or wait, and it did wait. It's doing the right thing. And now look on the left side. Look at all the cyclists. Look at all the pedestrians. They're crossing. This is not a time to go. We're in the middle of the intersection at this point. And I'm wondering, is it going to start going? Now, nobody's behind me, so nobody's pressing me. In a city like this, you really want to be moving ahead more than you're staying back. So now it goes. Look at that. It turned red. It ended up going. That's the first time I've ever witnessed Beta move in the middle of the intersection when it had gotten stuck. So it was basically stuck there waiting, waiting, and then it missed its opportunity. The light turned red, and then it went for it. I absolutely love that. I thought that was great. Okay, coming up here, this is it. This is the International Hotel, or the Trump Tower. And now there's someone coming out. They want to go around, I'm sure. Okay, so I'm going to put it in park really quick and say continue trip. 
And now we got someone right behind us. All right, and then we'll go ahead and turn it back on again. Perfect. So this is an interesting one. Coming up here and then going around, this is a very challenging maneuver. It's attempted to do this before and it, it didn't have great success. Turning from Grand Avenue onto State Street is a really tight and you have a lot of traffic. So hopefully it can do a little bit better than it did before. It needs to be extremely assertive to get onto State Street. Okay, light is yellow and now we have to wait. And this gentleman is crossing the road in front of us. He almost went behind us. And it's funny, I'm seeing a cone on the left. And if I look to the left, there's an orange bar. You, you probably can't see it with the camera, but it's definitely not a cone. It's interesting that it shows up as a cone though. You can see all these people here, even across the street, even way up there. You can see some people showing up way over there onto the other intersection. Green light, and it's waiting for these cars to come. Now, I would be creeping into the intersection by now. And we're waiting for this traffic to pass. And this person behind us is getting a little bit impatient. <laughs> but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to be a, a jerk and let it do its thing here, because it technically needs to wait. All right, so you could hear someone just honked at me twice. The taxi cab behind me is very impatient. The car starts to go out. It then hesitates because it's a yellow light and these other cars are coming. Technically, it did the right thing, but for a city, you need to be a lot more assertive. This guy crossing the road, he's making eye contact with the taxi cab, throwing his hands in the air saying, I don't know, don't ask me. It was pretty ridiculous. It's not polite. It's not courteous. It does not think about these environments and cities. I will be submitting this footage to the beta team. This is stuff that needs to be improved. Might have to step on the accelerator a little bit to allow this person to go around me. They are not happy. I think they're... I'm, I'm looking to make sure they're not giving me the bird or anything, but... This is... I mean, what the car did there was the right thing. It waited. It didn't go into the intersection and block the intersection. Sometimes in cities like this, you just need to be a little bit more assertive. So I'm stepping on the accelerator just to get out of the way. I think the car just honked at me again, and as they pull forward, I realize it's not a taxi cab. These are the situations where you can get shot in Chicago, so I need to be a little bit more careful moving forward. A little bit embarrassing. And that has to do with other people around you. If there weren't other people that were impatient, like you have in busy cities like this, you wouldn't have to have these interventions. But the courteousness is important that's part of driving you can't just completely ignore other people and be very rude it's just not the polite or right thing to do okay, this is the tight turn here and we we got lucky with the traffic there wasn't a whole lot of cars in the way i the last time i went through there it was packed i think it was you know, 6 p.m around there and it was just extremely backed up and the car would not go forward so there it had no issues because we don't have much traffic and straight ahead you can see the chicago theater that is exactly where we're headed next okay green light starting to go forward it's funny because back there where it started to get really awkward i should have my camera in the back to show you there was a white car behind me and they were not happy and then the guy crossing the street he saw the camera and he's like he, he knew my car was not moving or acting strange so he gave me a, a, a weird look so I think people are aware that there's some sort of test going on with the GoPro mounted on top of my car and um, now we're waiting for the light to turn green and then it's going to proceed forward okay and slowing down here it thinks this is a stop this thinks is a stoplight, so I'm going to press on the accelerator. Shouldn't be stopping there. I'm going to report that. All 
All right, it's a green light, but this guy is kind of blocking the road. Let's see what happens here, okay? Starting to go a little bit around him. Good. Gentleman with a the stroller there. It didn't hesitate, although it's giving them enough clearance. It was very hesitant and aware of them being there. And coming up here, I have the destination dialed in to be just to the right of the Chicago Theater. So it says we're going to get there in 300 feet. Now we have this bus here. But what I can do from here is, I believe, let's just try it right now. We'll put it in park. Yes, and we'll say continue trip. Might as well do it now rather than interrupting traffic later. Put it back on. Wait for the steering wheel. Come on. Okay, I had to step on the accelerator. We get a bus coming up hot behind us. Double tap down. All right, great. So you can you can see it's going to circle around here to head over to Millennium Park. So we're on our way to Michigan Avenue right now. It just changed lanes automatically. No feedback from me on that one. It found the gap. There's a truck right in back of us. We've got three intersections before it's going to be turning left onto Monroe Street, heading east. All right. Slowing down for this intersection. You can see the three red lights there, and they're all there. That's, that's as many as there are. It sees all of them. Great. I look around, and everyone's pretty laid back, relaxed. Everybody that's walking around. It's just these drivers that are impatient and in a rush. At this point, I go on and on about how everybody is in a rush around me. I come up to this next intersection and you'll see it doesn't quite creep into the intersection while the light is green. This continues to be one of the main gripes that I have about Beta in the city. It really needs to get out there and take initiative. I think the previous time it did that, it thought it could actually make the turn. Whereas now it's taking extra caution and I mean, I, it, it's it's like, okay, it's a little bit of a debate. You know, is it appropriate to go out in the middle of the intersection or is it not? Well, I, I can tell you that it's definitely safer and more appropriate to not go out into the middle of the intersection. But in a busy city like this, you definitely have to be assertive. You have to push yourself out there. So I just missed an opportunity there. And this taxi cab, it actually is a Lyft driver behind me gets a little bit impatient. You're going to see when the light turns green here again, they start to come up really close and push and encourage me to go out into the middle of the intersection. And as a human driver, you would do that. As soon as the light turns green, you're like, I'm next. I'm going to go. As soon as I get a chance, I'm going to go. Even if the light turns red, I'm going to be in the middle of the intersection and I'm going to be forced to go. So here it's green. My car is not going. So the taxi in back of me now is starting to creep forward. They're starting to tailgate me. As a human driver, as, as soon as the light turns green, you would be creeping into the intersection. This is the time to go, and it's not going. I'm going to step on the accelerator. It's starting to go now. Okay, now it's in the way. Okay, now I'm going to have to step on the accelerator. And that was almost a disengagement because of those people there. So I decided to replay this in slow motion just so you can get an idea of what actually happened here. So I did force Beta into this situation where it got in the way of traffic. However, it all on its own made the decision to start going left and then aborted and it can't go in reverse. So it just, it needs to commit. If it starts going and traffic's coming, it needs to commit. So here's the gap making me really uncomfortable. The car behind me is starting to get right on my butt. It kind of forces me into the intersection. I let beta take over and here it is. It starts moving and right now it stops. Now look at this. I am right in the middle of this bus coming. I'm going to get plowed over. So I have to step on the accelerator or go in reverse. I step on the accelerator. I get lucky that there's a gap there and I didn't have to take over. But this, like I said, is an area that definitely needs improvement. Okay, and putting on the brake there, looking behind me, making sure everything's okay. This is a one-way road. And there it finally saw the lines and came to the left. So that's that was good. But yeah, that was you know, an, another one of those situations where I, I may have pushed it. I had to intervene. It wasn't completely necessary, but again, for that courteous factor, being polite to other people is a key point with beta that still needs some refinement. All right, coming up here, we're gonna be turning left. 
Looks like it's getting ready. Now look at this. There's a police vehicle in the left lane. It saw that they were there. It knew that it couldn't go there. Now we are in the wrong lane to turn left, but it still has its left turn signal on. So the car behind me is also going left and they're correctly moving into that small gap. There was a small gap between the police officer and this vehicle on my left and that is the left turn lane. We are not in the left turn lane right now. So it looks like the path is telling us that we're gonna be going straight. Here's the screen glitching again. I'm convinced that this is related to GPS connectivity. It may be related to the screen, the modified screen that I have, although I'm doubtful with that. I do have hardware three and it uses the Atom chip. There's a new computer that is the Ryzen. Okay, look at the path now. It's kind of correcting itself, creating some mixed signals again. The people behind me are like, uh, because this is not the lane to turn left from, but it's gonna do it anyway. Let's see what it, see what it does. Okay, yeah, <laughs> it, it did it. Okay, now nobody behind us. I'm letting it do this, but it needs to keep going forward. Come on, keep going. Okay, now we've got a lot of people. Look at this, this is so cool. So getting in the right lane because we're coming up on the destination. Look at all these people. Unbelievable. Okay, light just turned green. And then up here is our destination. So it's going to stop right here. And then I'm going to tell it to move forward to the next destination. So perfect timing. We're right at a stop stoplight. So now the screen's glitching quite a bit. We're going to put it in park. And I'm going to say continue trip. I really hope that glitch thing can get fixed in the future. It's really annoying and it just doesn't look very nice, especially if somebody's in your car and they're watching the screen. It's like, what's going on? There we go. So we're really tight up against this bus in the left lane and it's trying to get over to the left. It's going to have a tight gap and it's going for it. Oh, it's trying to go for it. Let's see. I think we need to go left here. Yes, we do. We're going to miss it. So it's gonna to have to reroute. Let's see how well it does this reroute. Now, if it tries to turn left from this lane, it is going to be a disaster. It better not. So you can see the path, it's going straight, but in the past, what's happened is it will at the last second change its mind and then try to execute a left turn. If it does something like that, I'm going to have to take over and this will count as the first disengagement. Hopefully it doesn't, but you can see now my screen is really glitching. And I've played around quite a bit with this, with recycling the system power by holding down both scroll wheels. That does not fix this issue, so not even gonna go there this time. The last time I did that down here, I got a strike. And a strike happens when you don't put force on the steering wheel. And what happened was it was telling me to put force on the steering wheel, but the, the screen was cycling power, so it went black. Okay, let's see what happens here now. No, it's trying to do it. Okay. Okay, good, it didn't. So it's gonna have to reroute. Let's see how it does this. Okay. So getting over now, let's see what happens. Okay, now it needs to get all the way over. This bus is blocking. Okay, nicely done. Now we've got a lot of people here bus coming up right behind us this is our chance to go but we got a lot of people coming on the right okay it's going to be a, a short gap okay good the bus went around us perfect look at that beautiful nicely done so i have no idea where we're going <laughs> just going to throw that out there so this is none of this is staged none of this is planned i'm not trying to set it up okay here's a stop look at this stop sign an interesting area here. We're kind of going under some bridges. Now, this car on the left, okay, they're stopping. Okay, good, look at this, it's decision making. Ooh, now that car is gonna start going. Come on, Beta, you can figure this out. Keep going, okay, that car was starting to go. They're like throwing their hands in the air. What's going on with this guy? <laughs> uh, stuff like that it makes me laugh, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I mean, if you were driving, you'd be like, what is going on? What is this guy doing? All right, perfect. Look at this, going straight out. This is a tricky road. Hard to see the lines. Great. So we are now headed to Union Station. I actually had that incorrect. We're heading to Willis Tower, which is the old Sears Tower. I am on Lower Wacker Drive, an area that I've always wanted to test. It actually brought me down here uh, kind of 
by coincidence. I'm going through this tunnel and it does a really good job stopping for all these lights. No issues going through the, the tunnel here. Full self-driving may be degraded. That's interesting. Because of this dust, it's creating kind of like a fog. It's having a hard time, I think, with the camera seeing what's going on. But even though it's degraded, it can still operate just fine. Okay, and look at that. Beautiful. Coming out here to go back up. It, it could easily have made a mistake and gone to the right, but it knew to stay to the left. That was really well done. Coming right up out of that underground area. Beautiful. And the left turn signal goes on. So now the person behind us is going to get a little bit confused, I think. <laughs> Not sure why the left turn signal is going on. It's very clear that we are going to be going straight and jogging right a little bit. Nothing to do with turning left. Okay, let's see how it does this. Nice. Yes. It's exactly where we need to go. Beautiful. There's the Lyric Opera of Chicago. Civic Opera building. Some famous areas in here. We're in the financial district here as well. So take a look at this. It's coming up here and it gets in the left turn lane. It realizes it made a mistake. Thankfully, nobody behind us. It corrects itself, gets into the middle lane, goes through this intersection that knows it needs to turn left coming up here. So it does get over again into the left lane and it's waiting here. Now, normally if I was driving manually, I'd be in the middle lane because I would be able to accelerate a lot faster than this other car and just get ahead of them. But I'm okay, you know, letting them be in front of me. So I just uh, wait for the light here to turn green. I am looking around at this point. There's a Charles Schwab. There's a Fidelity, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. This is definitely the financial district of Chicago. Pretty cool stuff. A lot of activity going on down here. But again, it's 947 a.m. So it's a little bit quieter. You can see my car creeping just a little bit to close the distance here. I love that behavior when it closes the gap. It feels very, very natural, very human-like, and it uh, is something that gives you a lot of comfort when you're waiting at a light like that. So the light turns green. We're going forward here. You can see the car in front of me is turning left, and I am as well, so it gets over early enough. The left turn signal went on, and it went on appropriately. Sometimes it turns it on a little bit too late. Somebody is, is coming up behind us. Take a look at this car in front of me. They go ahead and execute a U-turn, something that my car would never be able to do. Thankfully, we're not doing that here. We're waiting for the light to turn green before we can execute just a normal left turn. You can see that person walking across. Of course, my car isn't yielding to him at this point because it is a red light, so it's just waiting patiently for the light to turn green. Uh, more people here are crossing. I zoom in on the map just a little bit to take a look at where we're headed. And this is the, like I said, the Willis Tower coming up. And then we're going to stop by the Union Station as our final destination. So right about now, the light turns green and we proceed forward. Here we are. It's time, time to go. Okay, now we just got honked at. So I'm going to step on the accelerator a little bit. Another taxi cab. Go figure. All right, going forward here, and this is our destination. Nobody behind me, so I go ahead and put it in park. I say continue trip to bring it to our last waypoint to Union Station. Let's see what happens here. Okay, going forward, great. But yeah, I mean, the, the rest of this trip is, is, I'm not anticipating too many issues. So overall, how did it perform? I, if I had to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, it's tough because humans are an element you really need to think about and if, if you didn't have impatient drivers on the road honking at you and expecting you to move and push 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 all the time i think it would have done a lot better but because of the humans around you 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 do need to be polite and courteous so for that reason i'm going to give it a six and a half out of ten i was going to give it a seven but I don't think it quite deserves a seven based on what happened today. I mean, we had we had only had one disengagement, but the interventions were all awkward. 
and uh, <laughs> and I, I've said this many times in my previous videos. If I were to summarize beta into one word or full self-driving beta into one word, it would be awkward because right now it creates mixed signals. It's it's just not appropriate for environments like this when you're in a busy city. So here this car is going, uh, turning left. We're waiting for them. Okay, now going around. I don't know why I didn't do that earlier. <laughs> All in all, like I said, I'd give this a six and a half out of 10. I hope that it will get better over time. I, I, I see these minor improvements. It's hard to say, oh, wow, this is light years ahead of the previous version or vice versa. Uh, there's not really huge regressions. There's not huge, huge improvements. I think at, at some point, though, with artificial intelligence, we're going to see this huge step improvement. And it's going to be like, whoa, it's going to blow everybody's minds. These edge cases are extremely hard to solve for very difficult to account for human behavior around you. There's so many variables. People do stupid things all the time. So people get honked at. It's, you, you can't just say, well, beta's, beta's a big nuisance for our roads. Humans are a nuisance for our roads. So you can't blame beta for stuff. Now, people, of course, are going to be skeptical because it's new. That's human nature. Someone's going to say, hey, you need to stop doing that or you, you're... you're you're creating issues on the road. Well, I have news for you. The humans are creating issues on the road. So if everything was auto automated, then it would be it'd be a lot more seamless. So I think it's just that weird period of time where we're going to have this mixed version of, of autonomy. You're going to have manual and automated, and it's going to be very challenging. So Tesla's taking a stab at it. you got to give them credit. It's extremely enormous the challenge that they're faced with trying to solve and can it be solved i don't think so i mean if i'm talking 100 percent, can it be solved i don't think so can it get 90 percent or or higher yes i think so and and for that it's in my opinion worth it to be a part of the program to help it improve because that extra 90 percent excuse me that extra 10 percent is is going to need a lot of input, a lot of data, because it's that, that extra 10% is 90% or more of the effort to get right. Anyway, uh, I, I could talk all day long about this. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video, and stay tuned for more Full Self-Driving Beta videos.